She runs a 53-year-old petroleum products company, but a horse lover at heart, Victoria McCullough devotes much of her life to equine wellness, both on and off the racetrack. The Chesapeake Petroleum owner and CEO joins me to talk about the point at which her passion for horses and energy industry roots collide. Your father founded Chesapeake 53 years ago, um, and many people might think you had an easy in to the industry, but in fact, um, you when your father died unexpectedly, you faced kind of an uphill battle um, to lead the company after that. Um, can you kind of talk about the biggest takeaway from your experience with that? It's not a, um, a company that, or an industry that has women as common right. you know, business owners. Exactly. So it's, it's kind of a good old boy system. Right. And that's okay. Um, I, wasn't an, I didn't know. When you don't know anything, you can start easily uh -huh. because you make mistakes and they're honest and easy. It's just trying not to repeat them. Right. So we had did a lot of catch up and I had the best people in the world. I took people from the company that had been in management and, um, and promoted them into vice presidency and followed um, a lead from my father-in-law who was my trustee, who was the um, chairman of the board of Collins and Aikman, a uh, uh, Fortune 500 company, so he had a wonderful experience. So it was a tutorial. It was learning from the ground up and quickly and having to prove yourself as a woman as being capable right. in a very, very male-dominated industry. Mm -hmm. But we seem to um, have found that, that somewhat comfortably, and um, I couldn't be in a better position in, in the United States today as a company that we are. Well, let's talk about that a little bit. Like you say, it's kind of a man's world, that whole <laughs> energy industry. How has that made you a stronger businesswoman? I learned to play on the field equally. And uh, there is a different code, is that sometimes with a gentleman, a gentleman can have a bad day, and he's just got a bad day. But if, if a woman has a bad day, it's not necessarily that. Sometimes there can be a certain moniker that could be attached to right. her. So a woman has to not have bad days. Mm -hmm. You can't have a bad day. You can have them at home, but you can't have them in the field. It's kind of a weird uh, double standard for, for women who sit in similar positions as you. But you know what's good about it is that if you know that, it puts you in a position to be extremely flexible. And you can really take advantage of that mm -hmm. because you're stronger. You're in a position where they're already asking you to be strong. Mm -hmm. So you have to rise to it. And if you do, you gain. You know, you win. Right. Absolutely. Well, I want to talk a little bit about what you've done uh, with the horse industry. So in, in 2007 is kind of when you noticed um, that there were a lot of horses being taken to slaughter and being used for human consumption. And so you've been a big advocate um, for fighting against that. Um, tell me about your endeavor with that. We proved what's in these horses. Every single animal, every horse out there, has had some type of injection of either a vaccine or a wormer or a anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. or any of antibiotics. All of these things are really restricted in protocols for animals for human consumption. So it was sort of an, it's just like my business. It's an unequal field. Right. So if the FDA says that there's a zero tolerance for um, butazolidin in, in, in cattle, then the same needs to be for equines. Mm -hmm. so, but this industry runs behind in the shadows, in the dark. Right. Unregulated, their equipment, their transportation, and all of the injections and the material within them is running behind the scenes in the darkness. And I just said, no, 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 we can end this by, by exposing this. And we've done a really good job at that. Well, you faced a lot of opposition um, in mm -hmm. the beginning. There's a lot of people who are surprisingly maybe opposed to ending slaughter in the U.S. How did you persevere through that? It's how you get in the door. It's how the message is delivered and how it works. So we win the Senate. Um, the, the leadership in the Senate had previously been opposed. And the vice president was very, very instrumental in getting the... Um, the Senate to come our way, the leadership. So for the first time in 10 years, we've got the momentum we need. And we just passed the Senate um, Appropriations Committee, Agricultural Appropriations Committee, two Thursdays ago, and last Wednesday, the House, successfully. So again, America is saying, we don't want to slaughter horses in the United States. Mm -hmm. It's such a, it's an issue that I feel like a lot of people don't know about. So um, maybe that's something that's almost working against you, but you're helping to bring it more to light. I don't mind that. I, I like adversity. I'm, I'm okay <laughs> with it. If, if you're on the right side of things, this, this particular fight doesn't hurt anyone. It helps. In all frames, in all facets of this particular fight, it just helps people. And there's no financial gain. No one benefits. And then the other side is that when you rescue, 
and you restore and you keep horses, it's an economic engine because of everyone involved to keep them supported. I want to talk about the nonprofit that you created to kind of help you along the way um, called the Triumph Project. And you're also working to um, buy a farm and convert it into a rescue facility, if I have that correct. Um, so what's your long-term uh, vision for, the, for your nonprofit? Well, I have multiple farms for rescue. Uh -huh. I have two in Florida. And um, I have, um, what I've done is go to people that um, are in, usually in the retirement business for show horses, because show horses are always pampered and babied and so on. There's right. always a great, there's a wonderful group of people, um, the Hickey family in Virginia. And I called them and I said, can you take 20, can you take 30? You know, could you take some of mine that maybe have a defect, that thoroughbreds that maybe would be able to enjoy life, but, you know, maybe they're not going to be in the, um, in the performance facet? And they did. And it helps their business. You know, they would rent more farms, or they would buy more farms and expand, and they, and they have to have people to take care of them. They need hay and farriers and dentists and mm -hmm. everyone. And the whole, I realize what a giant economic engine it is, is rescue is around the country. And um, I, I have rescue horses in my show barn in Wellington, Florida, which is the largest equine community in the United States. And that's where, that's the success behind us. I could definitely see that. Uh, well, this is a very interesting issue, and I will de we'll definitely continue to follow your work with it. Thank you. Victoria, thank you so much for stopping by today. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much.